Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be doing a quick video showing you how to remove the factory fitted radio on a 2011 Mercedes Vito van. Nice and straightforward job to do. You don't need any complicated tools. You only need something like this, which is a plastic leverage tool to get the job done. And also a TX20 driver, but other than that, it's, it's nothing fancy. By the way, you can get these from Amazon, eBay, car shops, normally a couple of quid, not dear. Okay, so without further ado, let's get on with it. All you got to do is pop this down the side and pop. See the thing come off there. Work your way around it. Whole thing comes away. Drop that down there. We've got TX20 here, here, and again the same here and here. So you've got four in total. We're going to unscrew. Also, up there, there's some lugs. You've got to watch those lugs as you pull the unit out. But first off, let's pull these four screws out and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. If you're installing some sort of double din screen size thing on one of these vans, you're going to need a fitting kit. Now, Connects 2 do one. It's CTKM B12, which is this kit here. And it basically comes with a replacement fascia to make the hole the right shape for the radio. A wiring kit, which includes controls to make any steering wheel controls work. Now, when I say any, there's a couple of different steering wheels fitted to these vehicles. This will make the volume work up and down and search, things like that. If you've got the full Bluetooth steering wheel with telephone controls, no, it's not going to work any of that, guys. A couple more bits of the fitting kit there, some little clamps. And also a replacement cage, should you need it. Cage for the radio. So it's everything you need in the pack ready to go. Aerial adapter, steering controls, actual power and everything for the stereo. Handy bit of kit. Like I say, you're best to be... Uh, you know, pre-prepared for this and order everything in advance. Have a quick chat to your retailer regarding the different steering wheels on them. Okay, let's get on with it. With screws all removed, we can now pull the radio forward. It's quite a, a sort of weighty beast. It's metal at the back, so you might want to cover up anything on the lower section here rather than it scratching it or, you know, don't let it fall. But you can pull it forward. We've put the gear lever all the way back as far as we can. It does go back quite a way though. Look, it's a really big chunky thing. And there you go, there's your connectors. So you've got a FACRA aerial connector on there and you've got a quad lock with a lever action to undo it. So I'll quickly pull those off, pop them back in there. So it's quite a weighty one, this one. Original radio now removed. There's your quad lock and there's your moving lever lock to unlock it. So that's the on position when it's in the radio. And you push these two tabs down and basically lever it down and pull and it will come off. It can be quite tight and sometimes the back bit of this, this plastic shroud falls off. Nothing to worry about, it just clips back on again if that happens. But yeah, that's out and you've got your aerial connector here. So we're going to have a FACRA adapter going in that if you have a new radio going in. There we go. Quick update for you guys. Just thought I'd show you the fascia in place before I put the trim back on. These are the little brackets that come with it. Yeah, so the fascia's got its own screws that go up there. They only fit certain vetoes. As you can see there, there's nothing behind this bracket on this particular veto. So you're gonna need these side ones if you've got this design of vehicle. Probably depends on year or whichever continent it's sold on, etc. Also, I'm just gonna show you, this is the interface plugged in as it should be. There you go, quad lock. Coming down the cable, we then come to the cable that comes with the radio itself plugged in this particular radio that's going in this car is a well, it's actually a dvd player now i must admit i'm not i've not done a dvd player in donkey's years they're clearly you know really on my way out but this is a dvd player uh, any radio with a screen however so i'll get to the point will have a parking brake cable which is the green wire okay now what that is meant to do is go to your handbrake so when the handbrake's on you can use the screen a lot of people want that bypassing so they can play the screen while they're driving along. Obviously, the safety aspects are in there, but, you know, that's not my my area to deal with. If you want your screen on while you're driving along, this is how you bypass it. This is the black earth cable on the radio. And basically, I've just snipped the long green cable, the parking brake cable, and crimped it into the black cable, which is the earth cable. So it earths it out and it makes the radio think you are stationary. So, yeah. Just thought I'd point that out, guys. Uh, moving across quickly, there's your steering control interface all plugged in. This particular vehicle was actually the white connector for the FACRA area, other than the one uh, completely redundant, uh, probably running something else. But yours may vary. So, yeah, just check that one, guys, before you plug it in. 
When you're installing the plastic surround, it's ideal to, on a lot of these, to make sure that your plastic trim is pushed up as far as possible. Sometimes that means holding this plastic trim up as much as you can while you tighten up the four screws. If you just tighten them up, it sort of drops down a bit and you won't have enough clearance to get this to click in all the way around. It can be quite fiddly to do. Uh, so it's just a quick point to try to push it up when you're first putting it in. And then of course, now we're at the stage where we've got the cage in and we're ready to pop the radio in and see it in place. Here's a quick look at the back of this particular radio. Obviously yours may vary, but what I'm going to show you is steering wheel controls. Now, this is a jack plug one, so it plugs in with a jack plug to make your steering wheel controls work. If your radio is like this and it doesn't use a bare wire connection, it's ideal to just pop yourself a bit of tape tightly over it, as tight as you can. And that's because sometimes when you shove these in, these jacks can just slightly pop out just a tiny bit. And if it does that, you got to take it back out again because your steering controls don't work. So I just tape them just to make sure they're absolutely rock solid in the back of the radio. Yeah, little tip there, guys. Okay, there's the finished article all in. Sure, you'll agree. It looks really nice having a, a double DIN conversion done on one of these. It sits nicely. Steering controllers, so if I just reach across there, I can't play any music, guys, because obviously it's going to sound completely different through the device you're listening through, and I'd get a copyright strike. So, but there's your steering controls up and down. Look, no problem. That works fine. Searching works, etc. But yeah, really nice bit of kit. And that's what it looks like. Hopefully, this guide was of some help. If you've got any questions, contact your retailer where you get all your stuff from. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.